we have now come to one of my favorite parts of Congress, introducing you to the next SCCM president, my dear friend, Louis J. Kaplan. Dr. Kaplan is a surgical intensivist. He currently serves as professor of surgery at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania in the division of trauma, surgical critical care, and emergency surgery in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He also directs the surgical ICU at its affiliated VA Medical Center. <clears throat> a Philadelphia native, Dr. Kaplan attended Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and then medical school at his once again Rutgers in central New Jersey. He returned home to Philadelphia and undertook surgical residency at the Medical College of Pennsylvania, including two years of basic science research in cardiac bioenergetics. He and I first met there, where we enjoyed overlapping residencies, his in surgery and mine in emergency medicine. <clears throat> surgery residency was followed by training in surgical critical care at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, a year that defined his future career path. His patient-centered care around critical care, as well as injury, emergency, and elective surgery. Research interests blossomed to include acid-based physiology, mechanical ventilation, as well as surgical infection. His CV boasts nearly 300 publications and hundreds of presentations. He sits on editorial boards for Critical Care Medicine, the Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery, as well as surgical infections. Within SCCM, he has served on every major committee and has led a host of initiatives, including our ICU Heroes Award, helping establish a, a public face for critical care. Dr. Kaplan is an innovator in taking critical care outside of the hospital, a series of adventures he will no doubt share with you in more detail. An avid motorcyclist, he also posts about the intersection of motorsports and medicine, including critical care, on a site known as Common Tread. Relatedly, Dr. Kaplan's common threads are his passion for discovery in the context of patient care, dedication to individual and organizational service, and an overarching devotion to his family and their two huge Akitas. Please join me in welcoming our 49th president, Dr. Lou Kaplan. Thank you, Heather, for such a delightful introduction. We are indebted to you for the grace and skill with which you have artfully led our society. Notable accomplishments include new alliances, innovative programming, and successful public health education that honored your family's devotion to pre-hospital care. In sum, you have stewarded SCCM through a spectacular year. Very well done indeed. Let us now look forward together. As Heather noted, this year's Congress is unique. For the first time, 30 organizations are collaborating with SCCM and our Program Planning Committee to bring you a spectacular Congress. None of this would have been possible without the dedication and tireless work of the SCCM staff. They are readily identifiable throughout Congress by their orange shirts. Join me now in thanking them for making Critical Care Week a resounding success. <laughs> Paralleling our team-based approach to ICU care, these societies craft a new team for SCCM. Our team includes media partners to help multiple critical care organizations be welcome in the right place and at the right time, this time. We are expanding our collaborations to discover new knowledge and improve care across the globe. Discovery is more than just inquiry. It is also the name of our increasingly successful research network. Addressing key clinical issues such as sepsis and organ failure, Discovery offers expert grant advice, research infrastructure, and clinical partners. Of course, Discovery relies on you envisioning a critical question to be answered. It is this journey that often brings one to critical care. My journey began with a bullfrog as I reached the very advanced age of eight. It was the first pet that was uniquely mine, and I was in love. 
As is the case for free-range bullfrogs, mine didn't survive the season. Crestfallen at my pet's demise, despite devoted care, I found refuge in medicine. It was the early 1970s and the heyday of cardiac surgery. Cardiopulmonary bypass was new. Imagine that time. Bypass enjoyed triumphs in patient care and the lay press with equal measure. With the naivete of youth, a future repairing failing hearts charted my course. All, of course, with the certainty of pet immortality. My parents often told me that I was an unusual child. <laughs> I swiftly learned that my childhood plan was less sound than desired. Nonetheless, evolving surgical techniques sustained my enthusiasm from grade school through medical school. More importantly, every success led me to question how each one came to pass. These were my next steps along the path to discovery. In England, the subway system is known as the tube and presents travelers with an ever-present warning, mind the gap. Signs, t-shirts, and mugs alike all remind passengers to avoid the perilous space that lurks between the platform and the train. And yet it is into this very space that I encourage you to delve, for it is here, in the space between what we know and what we can imagine that the answers lie. One of those gaps relates to our partners. This year, in conjunction with our partner across the Atlantic, the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, we are discussing a durable collaboration that embraces more than just the surviving sepsis campaign. Each year, we'll invite you to explore a different facet of the future of critical care. We intend to ignite your imagination our very first group manuscript, aptly titled Imagine, appears in this month's editions of both intensive care medicine and critical care medicine. In fact, this year's joint SCCM-ESICM session explores data science and flows directly from that collaboration. Critical care spans the often perceived gap between medicine and surgery by collaborating around a patient. The spark that ignited my passion would lead me to both critical care and the OR, initially as a surgeon and later as a patient. A touch over 38 and a half years rushed me headlong into several life-altering discoveries. The pain of myocardial ischemia. That one milligram of midazolam is insufficiently sedating in the cath lab. I required my own monitor, supporting non-pharmacologic management, and that despite a tightly wired sternotomy after four coronary bypasses, effective analgesia eluded my grasp, and still does on rainy days. I extubated rapidly and promptly enjoyed widespread atelectasis and hypoxia. <laughs> 48 hours later, exhausted from breathing, I asked my partner to reintubate me. Not your usual request. While preparing equipment, a respiratory therapist offered me a sample PEP device. Commonplace now, but, but it was new then. It was not very clean, but it was very effective. I soon discovered what previously inspissated secretions looked like, and that reversing hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction restored normal oxygenation. A true triumph of physiology, I discovered the why of my clinical condition. More importantly, Neither my family nor I was spared the uncertainty and sense of doom that permeated those five days. My wife was a critical care nurse in that unit. It was the unit that I directed and the one in which we met. Picture two preschool children, one autistic presented with a parent sprouting tubes, lines, and grains from, well, everywhere. To this day, my daughter Kayla, who greets everyone with a crushing embrace, provides me with only the most gentle of hugs a reminder of that time and her unique understanding of it. We had a robust introduction to what is now termed and well investigated by SCCM post-intensive care syndrome family. Indeed, our efforts in this space launched in 2013 have borne fruit, thrive, ICU liberation, and educational materials from the patient and family committee abound. Our work, however, is not complete. But then, neither was my discovery journey. 
Embracing surgery as an avocation, I found joy in searching for the answer to why instead of only what. My career delved into unexplored and somewhat atypical niches. Unmeasured ions, airway pressure release ventilation, emergency general surgery, now known as acute care surgery, and most recently, tactical emergency medical support are apt examples. With regard to deploying as a member of a civilian tactical team, my partner suggested a stat brain CT more than once. It was far off the well-trod path, but it was where I found answers and from where I drew inspiration. Just like within SCCM, where you'll find unbridled opportunities to learn, collaborate, and discover your passion. Passion benefits from being precisely channeled. In your SCCM section, chapter, or committee, you are likely to find advisors, coaches, and perhaps a mentor. Each of them plays a vital role in your professional as well as personal development. My journey to this stage reflects the influences of my guides. You each have my enduring gratitude. At the bedside, published research helps guide care. And much of that flows from our flagship journal, Critical Care Medicine, and its editor-in-chief, Timothy Buckman. You've likely noticed upgrades to journal layout, content, and appearance all of which support CCM as one of the world's leading critical care journals. But CCM is not your only SCCM-related source for cutting-edge research, clinical reviews, and controversial viewpoints. At last year's Congress, we launched Critical Care Explorations, our quite successful open access journal that Dr. Buckman also leads. Within the pages of CCM's partner journal, Pediatric Critical Care Medicine, and simultaneously published in ESICM's flagship journal, you will find our very first pediatric sepsis guidelines. The Surviving Sepsis Campaign has been quite productive. Importantly, the SSC has embarked on the next revision of the adult guidelines as well. You may wonder what else SCCM has accomplished this year. I am pleased to report that this gap has been filled by an annual report posted on our website and available for download. Finances, collaborations, publications, grants, and initiatives are all detailed in an easy-to-navigate format. Relatedly, this year has been one of introspection and inquiry. Council has delved into three key areas. Who do we want to be as a professional organization? With which partners do we wish to pursue that vision? And finally, what strategy should we employ to achieve those goals? Look forward to learning the results of this year-long process through Critical Connections, the website, and the annual report. This exploration uncovered important gaps in the strategic planning process. We want to more completely immerse you in generating proposals. You've already started to receive requests for proposals targeting areas to enhance patient care. RFPs will come to all members in the fall of each year, providing time to craft successful approaches to the questions posed. Of course, member-derived proposals remain essential and are readily welcomed. While many of those proposals stem from committees, they also flow from sections and local chapters. Like many of our leaders, my initial opportunity blossomed in my local chapter, Pennsylvania. Your proposals have established new structures, such as the wildly popular Standing Room Only Women in Critical Care Knowledge Education Group, or KEG. A fine acronym indeed. This year launches six more. Data Science, Choosing Wisely, OBGYN, Ethics, Geriatrics, and Billing and Coding. We continue to embrace critical care outside of the walls of the ICU as our founders intended. And outside is where we want our patients to go. Stop by the ICU Liberation Lab at the entrance of the exhibit hall. This lab dovetails with our pre-Congress ICU Liberation course. These two offerings highlight the work of the ICU Liberation Collaborative. Their work provides some of the most powerful data on patient and family-focused bundle deployment in the ICU. They have resources for you to take home and immediately implement. You're undoubtedly familiar 
with our fundamentals programs, including critical care support, OB, and disaster management, all of which address member-identified needs. This year is no different as we pilot our first ever FCCS surgical course derived from, and well done, by the way, in conjunction with our surgery section. Recently, members noted the need to teach life-saving skills in resource-limited environments. Some of those may be austere and operational, especially those faced by our militarily deployed members. But they may also be found at home, such as in the aftermath of firearm violence. Whether in a civilian role or attached to a tactical team, there is never enough of what you need when you need it to save lives. Accordingly, FCCS Resource Limited is also making its debut at Congress this year. We have partnered with the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma and more than 40 other organizations to help address the firearm injury-related public health crisis. Indeed, this is our lane, and it is unfortunately rather busy. Violence is not limited to urban spaces. It occurs in the workplace with great frequency in the ED as well as the ICU. At last year's Congress, you learned about the Critical Care Society Collaborative's high-impact work addressing burnout syndrome. This year, AACN, CHEST, ATS, and SCCM, the four members of the CCSC, are investigating how to best address workplace violence. In parallel, the program committee has embedded sessions on conflict mediation. They are designed to equip your team with de-escalation and management skills to prevent conflict and avoid workplace violence. Of course, these skills also help reduce moral distress, a key driver of burnout. Several years earlier, the CCSC developed the first five Choosing Wisely targets for critical care. I am delighted to announce that our Quality and Safety Committee is on the verge of finalizing the next five as well. It is clear that our society keeps evolving to meet patient care and clinician education challenges. As, and we are doing so on a global scale with courses in multiple countries. If all of those activities seem like a challenge to manage and coordinate, you're right. It requires skilled leadership to ensure that all of the pieces seamlessly fit together. In 2005, Business Week celebrated Peter Drucker, an Austrian-born American consultant, educator, and author as the man who invented management. He counseled, only a focused and common mission will hold the organization together and enable it to produce. The glue that ties SCCM's mission to action is David Martin, our CEO who leads the SCCM staff and advises counsel. Drucker noted, there is no procedure or checklist for managerial courage. Inspired and undaunted, courage underpins David's management decisions. Please accept our deepest gratitude for help shepherd SCCM towards excellence. Earlier, you had a brief introduction to my shepherds. Allow me to properly share them with you now. My middle child, Kayla, who struggles daily with autism. Travel and Kayla, well, they have different priorities. Fiercely supportive of one another, my family remains at home with her. Kayla has two bookend brothers who share a birthday, as Kayla shares mine. My youngest son, Killian, is 13, a fencer, and an unfailingly kind person. Aiden is my oldest at 24. He is a successful game designer with a wry sense of humor and lightning wit. Most importantly, meet Maureen, my much better half. We met in 1988 when I was a rather lost intern. I could not have done this without your love and support. I am indeed fortunate to have been graced with such an extraordinary family. Our home is completed by two four-legged managers, Bella and Cole. As my family does for me, this Congress provides several pillars of support for you. Novel education, both basic and advanced, expert forums, roundtables, and collaborative opportunities abound. All of these are overlaid with late-breaking releases from industry-leading journals. These include Critical Care Medicine, JAMA, and the New England Journal of Medicine. 
regardless of parent discipline, whether you're a trainee or faculty, in the community or academia, there is something in these halls and meeting rooms to bestir your passion. I ask that while coursing from sessions on ARDS to critical crosstalks to a very focused year in review, you simply mind the gap. It is my privilege and great pleasure to invite you to discover Critical Care Week 2020. Welcome to Congress.